Hi, welcome to my worm bin and soon to be worm bins. This was a worm bin that I inherited from someone. I didn't originally start it myself. I don't even know where the worms originally came from. Um, but basically somebody that I knew who was moving away who couldn't bring their worm farm with them said, here, take this. So I didn't know what to do with it. Did some research. Pretty much all I've done since I've had them is feed them. But based on what I've learned so far, these um, these worms are ready to to move into a new habitat, and the and the um, the compost is ready to be harvested. This will be my first try at it, so hopefully I don't fumble too much. But I'm going to start with the sorting of this compost material out of the. <laughs> got a fly from leaving the window open um, yeah so I'm gonna move move these worms out of this bin screen the the contents and and uh, move the worms into two new fresh bins give them a fresh start so not sure how that, how long that's all gonna take but here we go Before we begin I just want to show you around a little bit really quick the table right now has only the worm bin on it plus the paper and cardboard that was used to give the worms their privacy and the only other stuff I have here is the makings for two new bins one of the bins has already been put together it's the one here with the purple cardboard on it this one's already been layered in with bedding food leaves on top sprinkled um, and then the same as before as you saw with the old bin newspaper and cardboard in fact that one's been sitting for about a month now and uh, the catch tray that's beneath it is already accumulating liquid various odds and ends um, down here is a screening system that I assembled the other day really quickly out of spare parts various stuff to give the worms such as the eggshells for grit as part of their digestive system some rubber gloves some newspaper and then here's the parts for putting the second bin together catch basin which has got no holes this in it. bin this bin is the one that the worms are going to be set up in with their bedding and their their population will be placed in here this one has the holes in it to permit draining and I've already folded some paper and cut some cardboard to make it um, make it a quick setup uh, what, what else you see up here is all chopped cardboard some some soil from the uh, the outdoor co composter compost pile, not vermicomposting. And over here, these boxes just have some shredded leaves in it. This is shredded paper and some water that was left to air out. We have heavily chlorinated water in this area, so always best to let it sit out, let the chlorine vaporize off um, before using it for this sort of thing. That's all I've got, and I'm about to start. Um, sifting so the next step is going to be to get back to the worm bin all right so the technique we're going to be using is one where you, you scrape off material from the top where you don't see any movement anymore because there are no worms at the surface they don't like the bright light or the warmth or the heat that you feel from the Sun so they burrow down deep to make sure they stay moist to help me make the screening go quickly, I'm going to use one of the natural tendency of the, of the worm, which is to dive down and uh, avoid bright lights. And I'm going to start turning on some lights that I rigged up here. So you're going to notice these light bulbs are a little bit larger than the normal light bulb. <laughs> Quite a bit larger, actually. Um, these are either 150 watt or 200 watt light bulbs. And I got three of them. Wow, that thing's bright. And to, to shed even more light on the subject, I'm doing this on a nice sunny day. And I've got a mirror set up to bounce some of this sunlight back into the room and uh, increase the, the brightness in here. So at this point, the room is extremely bright, very easy to see, um, and probably driving the worms even deeper than they had already gone up to now. So without any further, further ado, I'm going to start picking through this and start pulling the compost off the top and uh, let's see what we get. Let's go. A couple tools set here. Uh, a 
little rake and uh, just a stick that I've used to dig through this pile from time to time. <clears throat> Over here is the screening system that I had set up. So I'm, I'm just going to take the material, put it straight into the screen that I created, which is just where I, drop, I cut off the bottom of the yellow bin and, and attached this screen material to it. It's flexible plastic screen. And then this, uh, the yellow, the yellow tub fix, fit really nicely into the red one. So it seemed like this part of the yellow one would um, fit ni nicely in here so that nothing can shoot out the sides while you're screening. And, and then I, uh, I'm going to use this leftover piece down here to put anything that doesn't make it through the screen. Stuff that still needs to be composted further um, by the worm. So that material just go back into another worm bin and continue what was started in this bin. So the aim is to have the red bin full of fine stuff, the stuff that goes gets through the sifter, some uh, stuff, some compost that didn't really complete the composting process yet. And once those things have been removed, obviously the only thing that remains is the worms. And then um, those worms are going to make their way into the new bins. So. Uh, here we go. It's my first try at this. I've never done this before, so wish me luck. I'm going to try, just try using this tool here a little bit to see if I can um, sort of collect a little pile on the top. Sort of a worm, a pile that has no worms in it. See, some worms are already pretty close to the surface. Haven't had a chance to dive down uh, to escape the, the bright light. I guess the stuff you would probably find here on top is also uh, stuff that I might have added towards the end there just to as cover or whatever. I don't want to make a big mess here, but I'm going to go ahead and start moving some of this material over into the screen. I'm curious to see what it's going to look like. I'm going to give this a shake here to see how, how it looks. So... completely new tool that I just created mimicking some ideas I've seen on YouTube um, not a lot of experience using it but I'm trying to minimize the mess so I'm doing it right over the worm bin anything that doesn't anything that escapes gets dropped right back down into the worm bin less cleanup for me later all right so I don't want to go crazy screening this stuff either so after I give it a little bit more of a shake um, maybe I'll just treat that stuff as, you know, stuff that needs to just compost further, put it into the collection bin, and then just keep digging down for the next batch. I don't want to go too crazy with this stuff, so. Maybe if I do it quickly, I can just go through a couple passes of, you know, taking this material, screening it, and then giving it enough time to dry a little further so that it can flake off more. Um, but like I said, I'm going to take that material and drop it into this collection bin for further use after. Alrighty. And then here, let's take a little glance at what we're getting. It's pretty fine stuff. Such good light in there. Let's see if you can see into there with the camera. It's um, nice fine texture, good earthy aroma, basically all, all of this stuff is worm castings, very little foreign material, certain things like a lot of leaves, little leaf stems and stuff it seem to fall through once in a while, but that's pretty neat, I like the fact that just one little pass like that produced that much already, so like I said, I'm new to all of this, kind of, um, going through a discovery phase with me together. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just proceed with doing what I just did there again and continue down the line to see uh, what we end up with. Alrighty, at this point I guess it's just gonna get a little bit repetitive. Maybe once in a while we'll hit, it, we'll hit a big pile of worms and get, get to peek at them a little bit. That's what might make these videos interesting. Stuff is a little bit moist.
I've taken a few passes through here now, sifting repeatedly, sifting through and letting the compost <clears throat> that's fine enough to fall through collect in the red bin. And anything that's still in progress, being large enough to stay in the filter, getting collected over here in this yellow box. So that all the same complete material can go back into a, a working bin. And the collection so far, I wouldn't, I'm not sure how far I've come through, maybe not even half, I would say, but the this five gallon bucket, if it's a five gallon bucket, is already maybe a quarter of the way through. So it almost seems like at this rate there might be a you know a couple gallons worth of fairly nice texture. Vermi compost here. I'm getting a little closer to the bottom, and at this point, I think I'd like to sort of stir the whole pot around to see what I'm dealing with here. The stick usually works pretty good for that. Let me try with that at first, just to see how I fare. All right, yeah, I'm definitely hitting large pockets of worms hanging out down here. I'm gonna maybe try it with this now. Yep, see, they're all. Making their way to the bottom, They're trying to escape my my lamps. They don't like the bright light at all. But either way, just I want to try to level the playing field here and bring bring some of this more damp material from the bottom up to the top. Let it air out a tad. Um, so yeah, I'm going to basically have worms mixed all throughout this. So it will require some time to. Um, you know, let the worms die back down, get them out of the bright light, they feel comfortable again. Don't want to distress them too much either, but I don't think this is the end of the world. At least this way I'm starting to get a sense of how many worms there are in here, and I think there's quite a few. So I think once, when it's all said and done, I'm def very curious to see how many we're going to end up with here. So, uh, this is really cool. All right, so this yellow bin was starting to get a little bit full. I did a few rounds off the camera, and then I figured I would just make some more space in this bin by uh, moving some of this material over into this kind of ad hoc container I put uh, put together here. So it's still yellow, still matches the color scheme, so we're still in good shape. But it's onward with more screening. So for now, I'll just shut the camera off and continue. We'll get back to this once we're getting closer. At this point, I don't know, last time we peeked in here, I think we were approaching a quarter of the way full. And we're probably about a third of the way full now. And um, it does feel like maybe because it was a little more moist, more of it's clumping and ending up over there rather than sifting through and ending up over here. It might just be what I end up with with this. Um, but now I'm beginning to get to the point where it's become, it's becoming awfully um, uh, shallow for them to dive into. There's not a lot of uh, depth anymore. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to move them over all to one side so the the depth is there. So there's still places for them to hide as I continue screening the top. And then I'll just screen the the clean stuff off the top and move it to the other side and then move it from there. So this way I'll try to like start quarantining the the the, um, the worm population into into one little centralized spot because every time I dig a little bit just scraping the top anymore I just see so many worms I'm just that that's part of the reason I'm thinking I just got to give this a little bit more depth so that there's some some place for them to go so now this gives us sort of a new shape here where the the, the pile is almost up to the rim of the container again. Okay, a little bit of time has lapsed, giving these guys a chance to dive down. So now, um, just like before, I'm going to start skimming the top. I'm going to dump what I skim right, right over here onto the left side. Make it easy to collect. I haven't seen any worms yet, so that's kind of what we're after here. Just take the compost.
if you have the time to so um, just like if you want to start here, don't forget to see to the more cycles of screening this and it's becoming more and more difficult <clears throat> to take any more material off the top without it being riddled with worms I'm getting so close to the worm layer at this point that I'm not sure how much more of this I can take so I'm gonna do one or two more and then I guess we're gonna call that phase quits and then we'll proceed to I'm taking these little guys and moving them into their new home. But for now, I think it's okay if we can give them a break. They don't need all this uh, simulated sunshine anymore. So we're, oh, it got so dark in here, right? Hopefully the camera can account for the change in light. But um, yeah, we're going to continue on maybe in a more low light situation for the rest of this because the, the, the high intensity light was just for the purposes of um, getting to this stage. The rest we could do with normal, less um, hot <laughs> light because it is pretty warm in here. So let's, um, let's regroup in a minute once I organize things here a little bit and move over the things we're going to need to get things on to the next step. Let me find a piece of paper to cover these guys with in the meantime so they can feel a little bit less exposed to all the bright sunlight. So. All right, so you'll remember this was the uh, ready to go bin, pretty much dropped the worms into the onto the top of it. The newspaper and the cardboard back on top of it and 
let them get to work. They'll be happy as clams. And then you'll remember there was the other one that we still have yet to make. So let's start grabbing everything we need to get placed into to um, allow you know allow the moisture to seep through the bottom, the holes um, into that catch tra tray. So we'll um, we're gonna need the bin. This will be a good cover. I think there was another piece of paper somewhere. We're gonna need um, other material as well. So. There's the bedding, so bedding material, um, I guess we'll probably use about a box of it. In this case, we're gonna use chopped up cardboard. If I need more, there's a whole other shoe box of it there, right? So we'll lay this on the bottom. This will be part of the bedding. I wanted it to be um, less permeable, so after I sprinkle that in, I wanted to also take some um, pieces of paper that I shredded. Don't know how much of it it'll take, but this is, um, I don't even know what kind of paper it is. I think it's from like a, uh, an old presentation board, maybe some newspaper in there too. Whatever, I'm gonna wet that. I'm actually gonna wet that to make it, you know, lay, lay it over on top so that it can be a good surface to sprinkle more loose materials onto. Because after that, that'll be the bedding of the cardboard and some paper and some moisture. Then on top of that, I'm going to put some compost that's from my outside compost pile. This stuff is not vermicompost. This is just, um, just from the compost pile outside. This was, the, this was the stuff that I tested my new sifter on. And this is the stuff that came out of it. Really fine beautiful compost so I think the worms are gonna really dig that because while it you know it broke down naturally without worm help I think there's still a lot of stuff in that that the worms are probably gonna like so I wanted to make sure that that stuff doesn't just go dropping right through the bedding I wanted to combine that with what else um, food I, I, I wanted to um, just take some of this stuff so now you, you'll see a lot of people talk about the preparation of food for the um, the worms they like to put it in the freezer. So this just came out of the freezer. These are nice chunk, I, chunks of, um, I don't even know what this is. These were some sort of old berries that were gone already. I have to dig this down deep so that the b bugs and flies don't get attracted to it. <laughs> um, this is all br Brussels sprout leaves all hacked up into pieces in the blender. So this is all fine chopped and frozen because um, apparently that, that helps the the worms get at it or for the bacteria to infiltrate the material more quickly and then the, the then the worms can start eating it um, and then the last thing I usually put on top which is more of like a fly barrier bug barrier whatever is um, a layer of leaves so I've got a few boxes of leaves up here not sure which box is best so maybe I'll, this will probably be enough they probably have about the same amount but this is just a box of Packed up leaves. It's from what the um the leaf the weed the weed the um the leaf blower has a bagger chopper function, so I collect some of that. So basically this is all we need here to prep the home for the worms. So why don't we assemble it? There's also some water here. This water I almost forgot about it. Um I just let it air out for a day or two. I didn't want to use like fresh out of the tap water because it's kind of chlorine. -y. The water you get in this area man i've been preparing for this for a while so you'll remember this is the one of those boxes that um has the holes running through it so the moisture can get out and um, i guess just the, the fit in between the, the drip tray and the bin is as such it actually has a vent pretty good ventilation maybe the moisture will just end up evaporating away so whatever doesn't matter to me um, One other thing I remember we talked about wanting to use, right? Let's get some of this back into play. Remember this? This was all the rough stuff that didn't make it through the screen. I think we're going to, if possible, want to make use of some of that. And even my already completed bin, I think I'm going to add some of that into that as well. Because that settled down nicely and I think they'll appreciate that as well. So let's get to work. Cardboard chunks first. This provides good, good aeration, good opportunity for the moisture to make its way through and get to the holes. 
and the hole is hopefully not getting blocked up, allowing for drainage. Let's go ahead and dump the rest of these in here. That's, that's one completed box. And then the next thing is going to be the paper here, right? So, so let's try it this way. We'll just dump it out, spread it out over there evenly. And um, <clears throat> not sure how much this is going to help map down, but this is this is where I wanted to spray a little bit of moisture down onto the paper in the hopes that it sort of maybe it gets becomes a little less rigid and lays down a little bit more and basically helps to hopefully fill in some of the um, the gaps in the cardboard below. I'm not sure how much of that's really happening here, but you know what? I'm almost starting to think that it's a good idea to put the the drip tray underneath at this point, right? Why, not? Why make a mess on the table if it's not necessary? Let it, let it drip where it belongs. Alrighty, so um, like I said, the next layer is going to be a fine layer. This is all, yeah, you might think this is weird, right? Hey, this is, is this organic? Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's organic, but this is basically the, the way to do it. A lot of people use different types of bedding. Some people use cow manure or who knows what. Um, this is accessible, cheap, free, or whatever, easy to handle. Um, so this is what a lot of people recommend. So, like I said, I'm going to use some of my um, reclaimed, partially composted material from the the bin that we just screened through. So why don't we start with a little bit of that? Because it's a little bit rougher. It might do a good job. It's probably down at, at this level where it's maybe a good idea to also include the food. So why don't we do that before we put anything further? Why don't we take the food? It's frozen. It's kind of crumbly. I might have to break it up to spread it out. It seems like, it, seems like it crumbles pretty readily on its own. So... There's no need for any precision here, just I guess I'm trying to be a little, you know, try to spread it out partially compost and stuff. There's so much of that remaining here that I think I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and continue spreading this out further. And it's going to be a perfect layer to cover up that food to keep any sort of curious pests at bay, kind of hiding it from them. The worms will get to it. The flies won't be able to. So that looks like a good. And don't forget, I'm still going to be adding my um, my garden compost to this as well. So uh, we're going to have a good protective layer here. Um, actually, I don't even see the red. Next layer is going to be the garden compost. And this, <clears throat> this already has a number of little um, little critters occupying it already. You see, there's little creepy crawlies. Contributors to the composting process. Don't want to try to bar anybody. So I'm going to maybe use half of this in this bin here. It's almost unrecognizable. This is, you know more compost but this is really I think what the worms are gonna enjoy it's already about half the container almost half the container this should work out pretty good so we got quite a bit of stuff material here that we can maybe even start another bin with I'm starting to have some ideas here about all right so like I said Last thing is to take some of these leaves from outside and <clears throat> drop them on top. That'll be the final layer. I'm not even sure if they'll all fit at this point. Maybe half of the box would be funny. I did squash it in there pretty tight, so it should expand once you pull it out. Maybe that's why. Let's see how it looks once we uh, spread it out here a little bit. Pretty good. Now we wouldn't want to give the poor worms, um, send them into shock by having them exposed to this super dry material here. So I might just do them a little bit of a favor and uh, 
give another sprinkle of water here just to get these really super dry leaves moist a little bit. Don't need a lot. There's no science to this, so you kind of go with your gut feeling, whatever seems like would be a good, um, I think the, the figure you hear a lot is maybe something in the neighborhood of like 70% moisture content. So don't forget, we, we wet the paper, we put in moist compost materials from the garden and from our previous bin, and then there's just this other final dry ingredient, the leaves that we just want to um, compensate for with the water. Don't forget the, um, the food. The food was also going to account for a lot of moisture because that was just fresh green materials, moist materials chopped up and frozen immediately. So their moisture content is all still locked up as ice right now. So here we go. This is going to be bin number two for our population. We're almost ready to move them into the bins. So why don't we get organized here a little bit and prepare to move them from the bins uh, from their the little temp temporary hiding spot in the shade up into the two new bins. All right, I'm going to start making some uh, order here. prepared bins set up. We've got a material over here that we can make a third bin out of and I think it's just this bin that the worms are in right now would make a good one. doesn't have holes to drain with so I'll just maybe not add as much water in the beginning <clears throat> and we'll go with that. Maybe not even add any food just use some of this existing compost stuff material that's over here so I'm gonna hold on to a little portion of these um, guys so that we can um, actually introduce them to a third bin. Well, I thought we were only making two bins today. We're going to make three now. So the fun part of this is going to be watching these little guys squirm down into the um, into their new home. So I wanted to introduce a little bit more light to the scene again, just so, you know, to accelerate that action. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll grab a bunch of them out of here and move them right over to here. But if you just peel any amount of this away, you could see it's just pure, nothing more than worms, basically, right? So they're just hiding from the surface. That's that's what's making it look like they're all just covered. But they, they're anywhere you look, you're just going to see that the the whole shebang is full of chock full. I'm going to grab maybe a third of them and plop them on here, and then we're going to watch what happens. So why don't we get right to it for what I'm working with here. Grab what appears to be a third. <clears throat> Drop them out. Quite a few worms. Not sure how many this is, but it's got to be in the hundreds. So let's let them do their vanishing act. Go. <laughs> Like we talked about earlier, we're setting up a third bin. This one has no holes on the bottom, so we're not going to add any water this time. We're going to try to maintain the dryness and just let the, um, the composting materials and the worm poop and pee be the, um, the basis of the moisture. But just like we did previously, lay down some bedding of cardboard. This time, I don't think we're going to go through an entire box. I don't think we're going to make this as deep or have as much material and all. Maybe we won't put as many worms in there, right? So we got that first layer. That's pretty good. Now, on top of this, we were placing the, um, the composts, both the not broken in material from the screening. We're just going to go ahead and deplete all of that now, put it all back into action, all back into play. All right. And 
my bet is that this is actually quite heavily populated with worms already. Mm -hmm. This garden compost, not vermi compost, just the garden compost from um, decomposing kitchen scraps and gardening waste. And then a fair amount of leaves, saving a little bit for the end so I can just cover the whole shebang up with a light coat of dry after we introduce some of the, the worms from the harvesting. Okay. And I'm sure that other, I'm sure that that compost that's already in play down here has got a lot of A lot of this dry material, a lot of this um, grit already, but we're going to add to it. Make sure there's no shortage of it. This is where the, um, the worms are going to land. Okay, so this newly created bin, a little bit different in terms of the order of how we placed stuff in here. Um, it doesn't matter, it's all good. What we'll do is we're going to um, bring over the other bin that's ready to go and we'll put the remainder of the worms right into both bins at the same time. This time though I'm going to set it up as a, a time lapse instead of uh, just ongoing video footage shooting. I think it should get the same effect as speeding up the video footage. Um, Maybe even with a little bit of additional detail. So we're going to give that a, a try on this go around. So uh, I'll rearrange things for that and we'll get started with the worms right after we're That's it. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. That's the splitting of the worm bin. Ended up going three ways into three new bins. We have tons of worms when this is all said and done and a lot more compost. But that's that's my first try at it. Hopefully it uh it has good results. We'll see. Keeping my fingers crossed. So hope you enjoyed the video and maybe we'll do more of these in the future. All right, thanks for watching.